Hiya, fellas trying to get a hold of you. Park your hat and grab a chair, huh? I just got your message, Jack. What's it all about? Oh, I got this story to do. Thought you might be the person that could help me most. Well, listen to one of these letters to the editor. Hmm? The story here, Fred, but I'm afraid it's not a very good one. I'm not at all sure it's the kind of story our readers would like. Listen to this. Dear editor, usually I agree with your editorials, but your call for civil defense volunteers was nonsense. If this city is attacked, my plans are made and they don't include waiting around to get killed. I'm going to take my family to a place in the country where we'll be safe. I think I'm as patriotic as the next guy, but I'd be pretty dumb to remain in this city when those bombs start falling. Name doesn't matter. Take to the Hills, huh? Another member of the Take to the Hills fraternity. Seems to be quite a few of them. Yes, I'm afraid there are. And the worst of it is that most of them are intelligent people. Good citizens, if you like. But they've made up their minds without thinking. They're letting fear push them. It's pushing them into something pretty close to treason. Thank God most people don't feel that way. But enough of them do to make it a serious problem. You know, there's really nothing to be gained by turning tail and running after an enemy attack. First of all, the highways would be about the most dangerous place you could be. And second, mass evacuation of cities just doesn't work. Most people don't know that for the reason that they've never thought much about it. And the third reason is the simplest of all. If war comes and we desert our cities, we've lost the war. If only we could help these letter writers see it that way. We must make them realize there must be no taking to the hills. Their own experiences could help them realize it. For instance, it's easy to imagine what would happen if most of the people in town took to the highways all at once. All you have to do is look at some of our Sunday traffic jams. Unless people know better, an enemy attack would cause a hundred times this many people to jam the roads. Add to that the desperate fear and panic that it'd be pushing the mob, and mister, you've got a catastrophe on your hands. The civil defense people are just being realistic and not planning mass evacuations. The roads have to be kept open for rescue and for firefighting equipment. That means every car which is not officially authorized will have to be stopped and moved out of the way. As long as I live, I won't forget what happened in the last war when some European people took the hills. I saw miles after miles of refugees trying to get away from cities under attack. All they did was choke up the road so hardly anything could move. Even they couldn't get very far. This happened many, many times and in many different cities. It could happen in our cities. If this were tomorrow instead of yesterday, if this were our town and you or someone you loved were trapped inside of it, waiting frantically for help, that help would never come. The ambulances, rescue trucks, vehicles carrying supplies and equipment would be stopped cold in their tracks. They could never get through to help the injured, put out fires, bring plasma, bandages, and thousands of other things vitally needed in an enemy attack. Just as the roads must be kept clear, so must the depots, terminals, and airports. Every available kind of transportation will be needed for emergency work. We know that mass evacuation can never be permitted if only for one reason, an all-important one. The fact that every able-bodied person is needed in the city before as well as after an attack. Putting out fires, for example, will require help from everyone. We must realize that in modern warfare, City dwellers find themselves right in the front lines. After an attack, our first responsibility will be to keep our heads and get back to our jobs. For each of us has a job to do. And no matter what happens, the people of a city must be fed, clothed, supplied with electricity and heat. The city must be kept alive, and it will take everything the city has to do it. You know, Fred, actually staying in the city to help after the atomic attack is not nearly as dangerous as a lot of people think. The danger of, well, lingering radiation is not really very serious. After an atomic air burst, the danger of radiation and falling debris is over within a minute and a half. Over and above that, we know from the experience of London, Berlin, and other European cities that people didn't even want to leave their city. Most of those who did leave soon began trickling back into town. 
Of course, a few people should be evacuated. Small children, the aged, the infirm, so on. These people should be moved voluntarily by their families. Not during an attack, of course. But the able-bodied person must stay and help. Modern warfare has no respect at all for civilians. Like it or not, each of us has his share of fighting to do, his share of danger to face. Running away from that duty would be desertion, pure and simple. In the army, it would mean court-martial. As a civilian, it would not only be treasonable, but it would mean having to live with the knowledge that in deserting your responsibility, you failed yourself, your family, your friends, your city. Deserting our cities would be handing the enemy a victory far greater and less costly to them than they could ever achieve through bomb damage alone. Their very idea in attacking our cities would be to destroy our will to fight. The enemy knows that a city deserted by its people is a city robbed of its power to resist, of its power to produce. The enemy knows, as we do, that in an American city of today, each of us depends on all the others. That directly or indirectly, each of our jobs depends on all the jobs of the others. Our biggest job will be to continue putting out equipment and fighting gear our nation depends on. To desert would be to throw away our most feared weapon, America's power to produce. There's no getting away from it. When the time comes, each one of us must stay in our cities and fight. I wish there were some other way, but there isn't. Yes, there are some pretty grim prospects ahead of us. The hell of an enemy attack can come smashing out of the sky at any time. And every last one of us will have to be ready to face what happens then. There'll be plenty of suffering, plenty of misery, broken homes, death. Dangers that used to belong only to soldiers, but we've got to be able to take it and come back fighting. Everything we hope for, everything we believe in, everything America has fought for will depend on us and what we do. You know, a lot of people behind the Iron Curtain are wondering whether we can take it if we're attacked. They're carefully measuring our courage, our capacity to fight, our capacity for sacrifice. They think they have the answers. Well, you and I and every American has to examine their minds and hearts and come up with a few answers of their own. The question is, have Americans got the guts? Have you got the guts?